So hello again and welcome back. Uh, this is Jean continuing actually on my introduction to the CX2, uh, CX3. So I'm so used to using a CX2 uh, flight computer. And so I've uh, gone off and learned a little bit more about it after my unboxing video. And so here's what I found. So first, um, turn it on. That's not uh, that's not surprising. You'll notice perhaps that the menus here are a little bit different than they were uh, in the previous. So what I found is the set menu here allows me to change the theme, and I put it to night because I think it shows up better on the video. Uh, might even show up better in practice uh, with the green versus white, etc. And I also set the backlighting to a little bit lower. Um, I could set the time to the current time, but uh, really uh, there's there's not much point to doing that because whenever I'm going to use this in a uh, written exam, it's going to have to be reset and it's going to lose that information. So uh, anyways, uh, you could set an aircraft profile as well uh, for all of the set up the, the weight and balance and, uh, and information on an aircraft. So uh, I'm not going to bother doing that for this purpose. So let's go back to the main menus. So there are really two, uh, main, two main menus here. There's the E6B, which does the calculations that you would associate with a, an E6B slide rule calculator. And there is the plan menu, uh, which would be used to do a trip. Now you can see that I've actually uh, put in a trip in here, but I'm going to remove it so we actually add it in as we go through it. But I'll just talk about some of the elements in here first. Uh, some stuff that I think would be kind of useful under here, um, even as, uh, as, as functions to be used during an exam or to be used during a, um, during a flight, uh, one would be ground speed. So, um, to calculate your ground speed with an E6B, you would need to know the distance, you would need to know the duration, and that would tell you your ground speed. So let's let's take an example here. Let's say that I'm going, I have done a uh, 25 miles, and now you see this, there's a question mark there, and that means I need to hit the enter button, otherwise it won't register that, that particular function feature. It, I did uh, 25 miles and it took me, let's say, 10 minutes to do that. So enter that and that's telling me that I'm going at a, whoops, no, it actually it recorded because I had uh, hours, minutes, seconds, it actually recorded it as 10 hours. So let's go back here and correct that. So I need to put zero colon 10 to tell it that it's really zero hours, 10 minutes and enter and then it actually at the same time forgot my distance. So I'll put that back. So uh, yes, well, in my, I must have a hell of a heck, of a heck of a, of a tailwind because in my 172, I'm going at 150 knots. So the remainder of my trip is call it uh, 83 miles. So I'm just gonna enter that 83 miles. Uh, so enter and um, I want to know how long it's going to take me to do that. So I'm just going to go down here to my ground speed, confirm that, and it's actually going to carry, calculate the duration for me. So you see it has an equal sign to tell me that it's calculated that. So a uh, duration of 33 minutes at this glorious speed in my uh, Cessna 172. So that's one function. Uh, let's go back and do, well, you can do fuel calculations as well. Same concept. So um, let's say I am doing uh, for my 33 minutes, how much fuel am I going to burn at a rate of 7.6 gallons per hour? That's what I used before. Well, it's telling me equals 4.21. And the weight of that is 25 pounds. And the rate is, it's actually calculated 45 pounds uh, and 60 per hour. So I could choose different types of fuel to, uh, to do those calculations. So, so that really tells me I, what is my fuel burn. Now I could calculate, cal calculate the reverse if I, once I get there to see I've burnt actually this amount of time, this amount of fuel in so many minutes or hours, uh, how much, what was my fuel burn? So you can use this kind of both ways. 
Um, airspeed, so um, this would be calculated if you wanted to calculate your two airspeed from calibrated airspeed and knowing the pressure altitude. So that would be uh, one thing, or knowing the true, the true airspeed, you can calculate what your calibrated airspeed is. So let's go back and say, let's my true airspeed is 105. Outside temperature is, uh, let's say I'd be flying at 6,000 feet. And at, in Ottawa here right now, the temperature would be one minus one degrees. Uh, whoops, I forgot to confirm that. Let's confirm that. Uh, pressure altitude, so I'll be flying at 6,000 feet and let's assume that the, the uh, uh, altimeter setting is uh, standard, so uh, 6,000 feet, 6,000 feet pressure altitude, enter. So that tells me that my calibrated airspeed will be, that I will be reading at 6,000 feet would be 96.78, so 97 knots because I can't, my uh, airspeed indicator doesn't read that precisely. So that's the type of calculation you can do with the E6B side of it. Those are the ones I think you would be most likely to use. If I go now on the total trip side, let's go and see what this leg trip looks like. So if I have a distance of, let's say I'm going to a local relatively close city of 113, the true course to get there is, I've entered it before already, is 320. My true airspeed is, um, let's call it, well, one, I, I, I like that uh, true airspeed. Uh, no, that was a ground speed. Well, let's make 115 today. Anyways, uh, wind direction, uh, let's see. What would be the wind direction at a little bit later on here? Uh, 22 at 38 knots, yay. So wind direction is, all, is to be entered here in true. So 220 and uh, what did I say, 38 knots, 38 knots. Variation is 13 degrees. Yep, actually though I am going to the west, which let's put it in as 12 degrees on average. And then the deviation, I don't know, but I will enter zero. And so my fuel rate of 7.6, that hasn't changed actually. Maybe it will be a little bit higher because I am uh, going a little bit higher. Actually, yeah, okay, well, let's leave it at that. I don't have a POH with me here. Departure, we said, I said uh, 1545. Well, it is 1545 now. So let's pretend that I'm leaving. So calculated values now. So I just go down now and it's calculated my ground speed down to 115. Uh, my uh, magnetic heading, my true heading, my uh, wind correction angle of 19, minus 19 degrees. Uh, fuel burn will be, because I have um, 58 minutes at uh, so 7.45, and my ETA would be um, 1643. And that's, th that's my calculation all done pretty well. Everything I would need to calculate a leg. So if I go back now to, up, to go up one, then I could add in a second leg, for instance, and then it would bring all of that together in my total trip review if I, uh, if I added that in. So I'm not going to do that for this time, uh, but that gives you a pretty good idea, I think, of the things that you can do. Um, it's fun to explore it. Um, the, the convert unit here button is pretty important. As you saw, I, my time was in hours, minutes, seconds, but it typically comes up in hour, just hours, so you'd have to enter hours and fractions, or and then for minutes you'd have to enter free. You can do weight and balance calculation. So depending on your, your airplane and um, enter the information for that and you'll do the calculation. And of course, it can be used as a basic calculator. So um, two plus two equals four. And that's good. And I also like the fact that it shows me what the um, uh, what the calculation is. So I tend to sometimes forget uh, some numbers or whatever. So now I can go back and trace it and check to make sure that my calculation is good. So that's, that's it. Signing off for a quick exploration of the new ASA CX3 flight computer. And this is, my name is Jean-René de Cotrim and, and a 
um, flight instructor and ground school instructor at the Rockcliffe Flying Club in Ottawa, Canada. Bye for now.